Welcome to this video introducing the major features of the Wildcat 5.7 release. My name is Timo Kord and during the course of this video I will show you how the new streamlined data import, log layout engine and other new additions to Wildcat 5.7 will help you to create Boho plots more efficiently. For most users the Wildcat experience starts with the import of logging data. In older versions of Wildcat this involved stepping through a series of dialog boxes or wizards and making decisions about header designs and metadata to import. In Wildcat 5.7 the data import has been revised and streamlined. For most file formats the import workflow has been reduced to a single step, which I will demonstrate now by importing a LAS file. Instead of opening the file open dialog box, I simply drag and drop my file from the Windows File Explorer into the Wellcut workspace. The import dialog box opens and I select the data channels to import. No need to select a header design and matching header keywords at this point. For your convenience the new Boho document is displayed in draft and fit mode. All logs are available from the explorer bar waiting to be dragged and dropped into the workspace to create a new layout. All metadata available in the last file has been imported automatically and is now available in the new metadata bar. For each file imported into Wellcut containing metadata, a separate section will be created displaying IDs and their corresponding values. The consolidated section lists all IDs and values displayed in the document header. Let's switch to page layout and have a look at the header content. Header values can now be edited or added directly in the metadata bar, which acts as a repository for the header text fields. If desired, new metadata can be created by clicking on the add button. Simply enter an ID and the desired value. When headers are more complex, you can sort the metadata bar alphabetically or use the search option. I'm displaying my document in draft in fit mode again. The explorer bar is activated, showing the imported logs which are no longer randomly arranged after the import. It is time to use a new layout engine to arrange the logs into a plot. When I move the mouse cursor onto the log titles, such as the one for the depth axis, a handle appears in the lower right corner of the title box. Left click and dragging the handle allows now changing the width and height of the title box dynamically. Note that the positions will snap to an invisible grid. To set up the grid, double left click on the ruler bar and set the position snap value or use tools Options, Document Layout and set the snap value there. The new layout control mechanism is called Snap Grid and can be toggled on off by using the corresponding icon in the Document Layout bar when needed. The benefits of the Snap Grid layout control will become more obvious when we now add the locks to the document. To do so, left click on a lock title in the Explorer bar to select it. Then left click and drag it into the document. Alternatively, you can click on the light bulb icon next to the lock title in the explorer bar to enable the lock display. Once the locks are in the document, you can drag them to their new position or resize them, benefiting from the new snap grid layout engine. To add multiple locks to your document at the same time, select the desired lock titles in the explorer bar by holding down the shift or control key. Then left click and drag the selection of locks into the workspace. Arranging the locks into a plot is now fairly easy. Use the handle in the title box to resize the lock. Left click and drag the center of a title box to change the position of the entire lock column. Removing a lock from the plot is also very simple. Left click and drag the desired lock from the workspace onto the blue shaded drop area. 
Once removed, the lock does not participate in the plot layout anymore. I'm going to apply a layout template next, using the corresponding option from the View menu. Please note the new and large preview window in the dialog box. After clicking on OK, we can see that a few empty lock columns have been added to the document, which I'm going to fill now with data from a TFD file. I'm using the file Import into Current Document option here, which spares me copying logs from one into another document after the import has finished. The TFD import has been revised as well and presents itself in a single dialog box which allows selecting an external configuration file if necessary, changing the sampling mode, handle the depth range, and select only those data channel you would like to import. In my case, I'm only interested in the FTC channels and the borehole azimuth, the high side oriented image and the borehole tilt from the OBI tool. To remember my selection for the next import, I check the box at the bottom of the dialog box. When prompted, I confirm the import into the current document. The logs have been imported using the layout from the logger software and I'm going to merge them into the log columns created by the template. Merging logs in WorldCut 5.7 has become much easier, especially if the target log is empty. Select the log you would like to merge, hold the shift key down and drag the log's title box onto the one of the target log. Select, shift and drag. For hidden logs, select the target log in the explorer bar first, hold the control key down and select the source log next. Then right click and select merge. If there is no overlap between merged locks, you won't see any dialog box. To show you another frequently used import feature, which has been considerably improved in WellCut version 5.7, I will import some lithology data from Excel. With the columns selected in my spreadsheet, I click on copy and can now directly select edit paste to open the import dialog box in WellCut. The import is no longer a lengthy wizard style workflow as in the past, but a single dialog box providing all the familiar options like data preview, delimiter and log type selection. The new log has been added to the explorer bar and I can use the select and merge operation to get my lethal data into the designated log. Looking closer at the litho log properties reveals two new icons for the pattern dictionary entry. Clicking on the folder icon, I can select and load my desired pattern dictionary with just a few clicks. Looks like I have a mismatch of litho codes since a pattern display is missing, but the status bar in the lower left corner shows me a litho code. With WellCut 5.7, you will find the litho editor known as LithCut fully integrated into the WellCut application. Clicking on the second icon in the pattern dictionary entry in the properties bar, you will start the litho editor window. In the editor window, displaying the contents of the currently attached pattern dictionary, you can open or save dictionary files, add new patterns, or edit patterns in place, as we will do for the code of our quartz veins. Simply close the editor window to apply the changes. I have imported some more data and added some structured data as well. The editor for structure classification attributes, formula known as ToadCut, has been fully integrated into WellCut 5.7 as well. You can still click on the LithCut and ToadCut icons in the toolbar, but a message box will inform you about the discontinuation of the standalone applications.
When closing the message box by clicking on OK, the editor window will open and you can load classification dictionaries or create new ones. To fully benefit from the in-place edition of already loaded dictionaries, display the properties of the structure log and click the Options button in the Attributes field. For each classification loaded, you can either replace it with a new one by clicking on the folder icon or click the tadpole icon to open the classification editor and edit the attributes in place. Before we talk about new and enhanced processes in WellCut 5.7, I would like to mention a small but very useful feature. You can now add a background color to the text boxes of a comment log. Simply select the lock and left click into the desired text box. Choose your background color and opacity level and click OK. The WellCut development team has done a great job revising the entire casing integrity module, processes as well as the workspace. Unfortunately, the topic will be too comprehensive to cover in this overview video and a special one will be recorded soon. New processes related to the data example currently open in our Bohol document can be found in the Easy module, RGB log section. A new Retinex and sharpening filter has been added and the brightness and contrast process completely revised. Equipped with a preview window, the processing parameters can be adjusted in a much more controlled manner compared to older versions of WellCAD. For those of you who like to automate tasks in WellCAD, I have good news. Since WellCAD 5.7, the integrated script editor supports creating and running Python scripts. For your convenience, a Python interpreter with PyWellCut pre-installed is bundled with a WellCut 5.7 installation. Let's open the editor by clicking on View, Toolbars and Script Editor. From the drop-down box at the top of the editor, I can now select my preferred Python interpreter, such as a built-in one. When selecting it, it adds already some code to import the wellcut.com module and creates an object of the wellcut application. You can create scripts using the object browser and add code fragments like the one to access the currently active Bohol document by double clicking on the corresponding entry. Or you simply type your code being supported by the IntelliSense of the editor. Previously saved scripts can be loaded into the editor. And executed by clicking on the Run icon. Alternatively, you can tell WellCut where to find your scripts and execute them from the File Automation menu. We have reached the end of this WellCut 5.7 overview video. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.